Hello, dear friend. Thanks for joining in yet again for another series of broadcasts. It is my prayer that your eyes see Jesus clearly in this next series of teachings. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm sure you've been having a wonderful time so far with all the teachings. If you're joining in for the first time, you're welcome to Learning Christ with Pastor Dio. And we've had a series of episodes. I would encourage you to listen to them and trust in the Lord to speak to your heart and renew your mind with those amazing words. All right, let's continue from where we stopped the last time. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. So, we find in that account, that Moses' account in Genesis, God's explanation of the kind of man that was created. It's a man that has been given the ability to choose. So he he says, he may freely eat. So choice is a fundamental factor in the Christian, uh, in the understanding of um, God's disposition towards humanity. Choice. So we can choose um, life or death, blessing or cursing, light or darkness. So man can choose. There's a choice. So let me ask I think we, we spoke about that in the last series. Why did God not just prevent the fall? Why, why did he allow man sin? Why was the present? Why was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil present in the garden? Now that this were duly answered in the previous sessions because it's, it's a fundamental aspect of, of doctrine that one must clearly grasp. You know? Man has been given the right to choose. And that has been the relationship between God and man all through the ages. When man was given the right to choose, and man chose wrong, and then God comes to redeem man from his wrong choices, the consequences of his wrong choices. And that's what forgiveness of sin um, deals with. It deals with the failure of man. The fall of man. So, man has a right to choose. To choose Jesus, for example, or to reject him. Now, having chosen Christ for for a man who believes the gospel, he now lives with the consequences of his choice, which is eternal life. Eternal life is is not the choice. Eternal life is the consequence of the choice. So, we have a right to choose. We do not have a right to choose the consequences for our choices. So, just like the wages of sin is death. Death is the consequence for sin. So, death is not a choice that is where it is sin that is a choice. And then, death is the consequences for the choice that is that sin is. You will get it. So, God said, of all the trees of the garden, it, that looks like the gospel. Of all the trees of the garden, that may really, actually the, the attention of God was speaking about the attention of Jesus, rather, God was directed towards the tree of life because he had already spoken in previous verses that there were two trees the, the, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So, the tree that was God was directing Adam's attention to for him to freely eat was the tree of life. So, that was the gospel to Adam and what we find in Adam's action is a rejection of God's word and that is sin. Sin is to act contrary to God's word. It's to take another counsel other than God's counsel and that's sin. So God gave Adam the right to freely eat of the tree of life. And then told him that in the eating of the tree of life, there is a rejection of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But Adam chose to reject the tree of life to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And that 
brought about the entrance of something that God did not create into God's creation, which is sin. Sin, like we said, is man's creation. Sin is not the creation of God. Death is not the creation of God. Death is not a messenger of God. Sin is a creation of man. And death is the consequence of sin. Romans 5 verse 12, where was, by one man, sin entered into the world. Which world? The world that God created, that was testified in Genesis chapter 1, that it was very good. Now, sin, which is very bad, entered into that very good world of God. And then, it says, for by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so, death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So, in the entrance of sin into the world, we see the reign of death, which was under subjection to the authority of Satan. So, Satan's sin was in Adam's sin. I know there is a school of thought that has a, uh, a pre-Adamic world. I think um, several Pentecostal pastors uphold that thought. That sin and uh, Adam, uh, Lucifer was in the world and he had he was author, had authority over a creation and then he and then he wanted to exalt his throne above God and then you know no angel can think of such the the no angel can think of trying to overthrow God the issue has always been man man has been the issue with Satan so Satan took man's dominion, authority. Took authority over man. And that's the sin of Adam, uh, of Satan, in that he made Adam sin. Now, the, the angel who was made to serve man now took up a position of putting man under servitude. He had left, the angel had left his first estate. The estate of an angel is to serve man. And then, he left that estate and then brought man into service or servitude to Satan. And that's, that is all about the sin of Satan. That's all about the sin of Satan. So Satan's sin is in Adam's transgression. Sin entered into the world. There was no sin until Adam brought it into the world. So the iniquity that was found in the angel called Lucifer was in Adam's sin, meaning that he decided to deceive and then to bring man into subjugation. All right. So, 1 John 3, verse 8, this is a very, very key text that you must, we, we have to look at carefully. It says, He that committed sin is of the devil. He that committed sin. What is sin? Sin is to take another counsel separate from God's counsel. That's just it. Sin is to believe another word. Obviously, that would be to disbelieve God's word. Is to reject God's word. Sin is simply to reject it. So he says, he that committed sin, he that misses the mark. The mark is God's holiness, righteousness. To miss the mark is sin, is transgression. So it's, he that committed sin is of the devil. So you find the concept of the devil in sin. Because it is actually for man and of man. But now because of the introduction of sin, we now have of the devil. So man was now of the devil. So he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Let's read again. He that committed sins of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Beginning is Genesis. So the devil sinned from Genesis. And that's Genesis chapter 3. Sin did not exist in Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. Sin began to exist from Genesis chapter 3. So the devil sinned from the beginning by making Adam sin. 
the devil sinned from the beginning by making Adam sin. You know, it says, for, the, for, this, the, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So, we find God's arrangement, man's transgression, and then we now find God's intervention, which is to destroy the works of the devil. Follow this carefully. So, the wages of sin is death. Death reigned in the earth. Sin brought death. Adam brought sin. Very, very simple to get. Adam brought sin. Sin brought death. And in the reign of death, Satan is the ruler. In the reign of death, Satan is the ruler. And then Jesus brought salvation. Salvation from this arrangement that negates God's ordination for creation. So we find a redemption in Christ. Follow this again. So, in that redemptive work, we find the judgment of God. The judgment of God. Judgment is separation. Judgment is discernment. So, we find the... So, God in creation intended for man to be in union with him. Now, sin brought separation. Now, in that separation, there was now a union between man and the devil. And then, in the redemptive work, we now find judgment. That means in that judgment, there is now a separation between the devil, Satan, and man predicated on the redemptive work. Hallelujah. So, Satan was judged in the redemptive work. That means he was separated from man. If, you, if you're paying attention, take this note carefully. Redemption was not for the devil. Redemption is for man. I take that again. Redemption. There is no redemption for angels. Redemption is strictly for man. Look at this text in Hebrews 2, 16. For verily, Hebrews 2, 16, for verily he took not on him, that's the King James, now, he took not on him the nature of angels. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. We trust you were blessed by the teaching. For further inquiries about learning Christ with Pastor Temidayo Jolayemi, do well to drop us a mail on Church at gmail.com. We will be glad to answer your questions. Till the next broadcast, we see Jesus.